The kinds of things that started emerging were not very much to do with mathematics, not, not mathematics per se. There weren't people saying there, I don't know why people teach us statistics or anything like that. They, they started, the, the students spontaneously started talking about what their attitudes were, what their aspirations were, what, what drives them, what, what gets them going and, and, and that kind of thing. So we found we were dealing with human things, which was quite a lesson. I think it was 93% of them named getting a good job at the end as, as either, a, either their main thing that they wanted to achieve or one of the main things they wanted to achieve. Second, by, by a bit, was enjoyment. So it's important to understand this because if we're going to be able to, un to, to support our students and make the course what they want, we've got to understand what it is that's bringing people into mathematics. What did they expect when they came on a maths degree? What, were they, uh, what did they think a maths degree would be like? They hadn't a clue. Uh, they, they didn't know, and particularly most of the time they didn't really care either. Uh, they thought it was going to be obviously a continuation of the sort of maths they've done before at school, but, but they had no particular expectations as to what would be involved, what particular things would be in the syllabus. What were the main difficulties they found? Difficulties with finance. Uh, that's it. That was the, the, by f uh, far and away the most important problem. Generally, what we were surprised about, I think, was how much of that list is pure practicalities. The course is not their main concern. The course, I, I'm always finding it slightly disappointed that the course is only a very small part of what they're concerned about when they're at university. But some of them, you know, we found, we found some of them talking about homesickness and first time I've ever had to do my own washing and, and stuff like this. And the point is that that is not just a transition issue. We found that that was recurrent. One in five first years are enjoying their mathematics less than they did at school. Now, now to me that's a pretty dangerous statistic. One in four feel less confident since they land on their degree. Now you might say that's a natural kind of thing. I would say there's some kind of mismatch going on there. Many students on the maths degree perceive mathematics as difficult. Some of the staff see that as a good thing. It should be difficult. There is an alternative view of that, which is that if you've got a student who is well qualified, they shouldn't find it, they find it challenging, but they mustn't find it as difficult as some of the students were saying they were finding it. We shall build the courses in a way which builds on the qualifications that we say we're accepting. And it's as simple as that. But we're not, we're still talking about bridging the gap. We're still talking about keeping, this is as if there's some kind of absolute place where university courses have to start but you've got to deal with the world as, as it is. When a bunch of mathematicians sit down and design a course, what they do is they design it around content. I ask the question, do we put too much content in? Very few maths graduates end up using advanced mathematical ideas when they graduate. A lot of them will use lower level maths, a lot of them will use their analytical and problem solving skills that they should have developed as, as part of what they were doing. The nicest quote that we have from one person was, well, maths is just a skills degree. And what you do is you develop your skills by studying content, but content is not the primary thing, it's the skills that you discover, which is something that we don't teach. We think it's going to get across there by osmosis. The message is getting through that if you do a mathematics degree, then you will earn a lot of money. And so they come out and say things like, oh, I'll get a good job at the end because it's maths, isn't it? Um, but, but then you say, what kind of job do you think you're going to get? Well, I don't know. I don't know. You know so the specifics about which jobs they end up with for first year, this, this is for first year undergraduates in their induction week. They, they, they haven't got a clear message. They weren't interested in the fact you can use maths for designing aircraft wings or whatever. 
They were interested in maths as a subject. They weren't interested in the, in the utility of it. Um, whether that just applies to mature students, I don't know. I rather suspect it doesn't. I rather suspect, though I haven't asked them, but I rather suspect that the, the younger students as well want to do maths just because it's maths. Whereas I think in the past, continuing professional development activity has been seen as important, but not necessarily the core activity that we engage in, now that situation is changing quite a lot. The idea is that educating those who are working, and therefore some part-time education, is going to be very important. From the interviews we had, probably the, I would say the most important thing to get right is the relevance. And they would, the training manager would probably say that for the right course, they will make sure that happens. So obviously there is a cost element, but the relevance is the key, is the key issue to get right. Students of, who are at work do not appear to like the idea of distance learning at all. It's two things. I think it's confidence in the study and also the perception that they would actually like to have the resources and time to do the study. And those sort of two things are going together. But this is quite an important thing for us to take on board because regardless of what that view is, actually distance learning is going to form an important part of delivering to people in the workplace because there is no other way of doing it effectively. And it probably will be a blended learn, a mix of contact and distance learning, but it can't be entirely by class, co class contact. So we've actually got to get this right. One of the things that employers regularly say, we want people to have certain qualities, Communi communication skills, team working skills, leadership skills, you know, time management skills, all, all, those, all those kinds of things, which you, which you can build into the curriculum without damaging other parts of the curriculum by saying, we still want you to learn the same stuff, but we want you to, sh to show us different aspects of yourself while you're, while you're doing that. Um, we do get the reaction from some people saying, it's not our job to do that. Our job is to teach mathematics, and that's it. My answer to that is, you should respect your students. You're telling your students that you're going to get them to a place where they can get good jobs at the end of it, you should respect that and you should therefore be developing, aiming to develop in your courses the skills that, that will help those students to do that. So, so this is a big issue. In fact, I think it's one of the biggest issues. I think the main thing is what we must learn not to do is to judge students by what we are. That we are, we're the weird ones. We're the minority. We're the ones who've become the mathematics lecturers. And so we're a bit odd. It's the students who are the majority and we've got a, a duty to adjust to them to respect what their aspirations are and to respect what motivates them.